Hallelujah. Well, Lighthouse, you guys excited about the Word? Yes. Stay in expectation to receive a word right now, a now word in Jesus' name, as I welcome up Bishop Tony Samuels to bring the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Can y'all hear me out there? Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Make a brother feel right at home. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you are at home. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's not delay. Let's get our Bibles open. Baby Gonna Ellie. Be... Oh. Are they watching? So we want to give a shout out to Matt and, and Jennifer Musa and baby Ellie. Amen. Welcome to the family. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And happy birthday, Jenny. Happy birthday, Jenny. Amen. Amen. Grow the church from the inside out or outside in. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all can put up Romans 15, 13. Amen. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. I want to minister tonight on the hope that makes dreams come true. The hope that makes dreams come through true. Amen. Amen. Father, I just thank you uh, right now, Lord, for the awesome opportunity to minister your word. And Father, I ask that you will give me your words your words of life and revelation, Father God, and utterance, Father God, to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would want me to speak. Father God, I pray that you will use this word uh, uh, tonight to speak into people's lives, into their situations. Father God, let it uh, pierce the, the soul, Father God, the mind, the will, and emotions. And Father God, bring people into proper alignment, into a position of receiving from your spirit, receiving the destiny that you have for their lives. Father God, we thank you that, that you are a great God. You're a mighty God, and you're an awesome God. And we thank you, Father, that the best is yet to come. So, Father God, I just thank you right now that it won't just be an information, but it be an impartation of your spirit to bring the grace of God. So it will not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So, Father God, let the body of Christ here at the Lighthouse and those watching online be edified, built up, strengthened, refreshed, revived in the inner man like never before if you believe it say amen, amen. Jesus name amen amen this message was inspired by um, a couple of conversations I had this week uh, one of them uh, was an uh, individual he was, he was pointing out some people and he, he said he made this comment he said man when I looked at them they seemed hopeless and when I heard that word I was like hopeless and the people he was talking about was Christians and I'm like, hopeless Christians? What is that about, amen? But listen, a uh, hope is a powerful force. I began to think about it, and I remember um, when I was at the lowest place of my life, amen, right before the Lord got me, amen, that I had a hope on the inside that my life was about to get better. And even though there was no outside situations to support the hope that I had, I come to tell you that my hope, was so powerful and so great that it overrode all the negative situations that I had in my life. And I began eventually to walk in the hope that God put in my life. So I want to tell you tonight, do not underestimate the hope that you have in your life, the, the dream that you have in your life, that picture that you have that's beyond where you're at, amen? For me, it was a jail cell, but God gave me a hope in a jail cell to see beyond those walls, to be, see beyond those barriers. And I come to tell you that God was faithful to bring the past, the hope that he deposited in my life, amen? And if you have a hope that's been given by God, God, I come to tell you tonight, you can take it to the bank. That's a prophecy that you have in your spirit, and that's your confirmation that what God is going to do in the future, it will come to pass in your life. Amen? Anybody got hope tonight? Amen? Now listen, there's a connection between faith and hope. And to see the manifestation of what God has for your life, 
you must understand this. Now, when the Bible talks about hope, it's not talking about hope in a secular sense, about wishing for something, I hope something happens. No, Bible hope is based on a confident expectation that what God said is going to come to pass in my life. So Bible hope is based on expectation. That means you're willing to wait for it. That means you're looking for it. That means you get up in the morning with a hallelujah in your mouth, in your spirit, knowing that, going, listen, what's in my spirit is greater than what I'm facing in my life. And you, and listen, it begins to drive you. Like, no, we're talking about spiritual momentum. But listen, if you lose your hope, you lose your momentum but if you can keep your hope alive it'll drive your spiritual momentum anybody got some hope now listen the hope that the bible is talking about is a spiritual force that works with faith to take what is not seen and bring it to the place to be seen in your life you know, it's not about having, like, about having a church service. It's about bringing you into the reality of the dream that God has for your life. I don't know if you came tonight just for a church service. If you did, you're missing it. No, you come to church to receive some faith substance to fuel the hope that you have to keep you encouraged until the manifestation of that hope comes to pass. That's why some of us got to come to church. I got to hear the word of faith. I got to get built up because my whole life is based on the hope that's on the inside of me. Amen. So coming to church is not just about having a nice, cute little church service. Give me some pastor that's going to feed my hope. That's going to get me beyond the current situations and circumstances that I'm dealing with in my life. Amen. I need some fuel. I need some momentum. I need some dream seeds to be deposited in my spiritual bank account amen stir man you better stir yourself up tonight you better not let the devil take your dream you better not make him put you a uh, sad mad and doom and gloom God did not save you for you to get wiped out God saved you because he has a dream and a destiny for your life amen and you gotta wake up to it you gotta believe it you gotta fight for it Let me say something. I ain't got no problem with people saying hallelujah, shouting back at me. I like it loud, amen. <laughs> this ain't no dead church. <laughs> so shout, brother. <laughs> there was a brother that used to come here to you. He was shouting, and they told him to calm it down. I noticed he don't come anymore. So here's my, got my thing, ushers. I don't know by the spirit if it's demonic, amen? Let me handle that. I'll tell you what to do. But if somebody's shouting, responding to the word of God, some people need breakthrough, amen? They, they need to release the halal of God, amen? They got oppression, depression on their life. And a lot of them people telling people to shut up is the one that's quiet and won't even respond to the word of God. Leave the people alone, amen? Show me a preacher that I would rather come to this people being quiet and not even responding to the word of God. The, 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 the ministry feeds on that. The ministry will begin to get stronger and begin to build up as people uh, have an expectation and they're receiving and responding to what the spirit of God is doing in the service, amen? Miracles happen when there's an expectation. That's why no church service can be business as usual. You got to come in that God is going to do something different than he did the last time. Because I'm dealing with a different issue today. Pastor, we told him to quiet down. I got, I said, like, you know what, leave him alone. Matter of fact, a lot of them people that told him to be quiet is gone. See the, how you say this, the religious will always uh, chase the fire out, attack the fire. Wasn't there a guy in the Bible called blind Bartimaeus 
Jesus! Jesus! And we're just like, oh, quiet, quiet, quiet down. they like, you don't know what I'm dealing with. I ain't got no sight. That's easy for you to say. I need to get healed and delivered and set free. You're walking around with your eyesight. I can eat something from Jesus. And you telling me to be quiet? No, you be quiet, amen. I got to get mine. I come to get mine. I need a healing. I need a deliverance. I need a miracle in my life. I didn't come to church to play games. We're going to call that brother back, too. But man, forgive us, amen, for being religious. See, sometimes you can have, you can say, uh, order and then quench the spirit. He's out of order. You're out of order. You know, when I came to God, it wasn't about a church service. It was all about a relationship and walking in the plan and destiny that God has for my life. You have to be hungry for it. You have to fight for it. Or if not, it'll just fade out. Amen? You'll be here one day, but if you don't learn to be hungry for it and learn to fight for it, you'll just be a possibility that never became a reality. Hebrews 11.1. The Bible says, now faith is the substance. Am I under this monitor? Oh, yeah, I am. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't hear myself. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. You notice the connection between faith and hope? Faith is the substance of the thing you're hoping for and the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the material that's going to create what you're hoping for. Now listen, you can have a pile of materials to build a house, but if you don't have the blueprints from the architect, that means there's no plan to create a house even though the materials are there. So you can have faith, but if you don't have hope, you're like a builder with the material but no blueprint to put the material into operation. So that's why you got to have, you can have faith, but it will just stay dormant. It'll just be like a pile of material unless you stir up your hope and that faith has something to attach itself to to create the reality that you're believing God for. So that's why you can't afford to lose your hope. You can't afford to lose your dream. You got to keep that thing alive. You got to say, this is not it for me. God got more in store for me. Some of y'all working in jobs and you're wondering, is this it? The devil is a liar. God's got more in store for your life. Don't base it on your education or your qualification. The brother just said that the favor of God will surround you like a shield. That means God will put you in a place that don't, you're not qualified for, you don't have credentials for, but God will bust the system to get you into the dream that he has for your life. Amen? Somebody say the favor of God. I got hope because I have favor in my life. I got the favor of God. Your hope is the blueprint for your faith to create the reality that you desire. Jeremiah 29, 11. God said, for I know, let me ask you something. Do you know? It's not good enough for God to know that he has plans. Do you know that God has a plan? God's got a plan for my life? Absolutely. It ain't us about the preacher. It ain't just about the evangelist. Matter of fact, God set the preacher up and the evangelist up just to minister to you. That's how much God thinks about you, that he raises people up to minister to you, to feed your hope, to feed your faith, so you can eventually walk in the reality that he has for your life. For he says, for I know the plans. See, sometimes you got to man, God's got a plan for my life. Hallelujah. Okay, what kind of plan is this? 
declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, mm. not to harm you. God's not trying to hurt. Oh, oh. So sometimes we think the hurts we go through in life is from God. That ain't from God. That's the devil. But guess what? The devil's plan can outdo the plan of God. You may go through a hurt on your way to the fulfillment of your dreams, but your hurt is not going to wipe out the plan that God has for your life. Amen. Take a licking and keep on ticking. Take a licking and keep on praising. Take a licking and keep on showing up. Take a licking and keep on doing this thing. Plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has plans for your life, and he wants to give you future, a future and a hope that will take you into the future. So your hope, you are waiting for it. Are you looking for it? Are you expecting it to happen? Maybe you have a hope of a restoration. Do you believe it's going to happen? Now listen. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Go to Romans 8, 24 and 25. Now listen to this. What Romans says about hope. For this is the hope of our salvation. But hope means that we must trust and wait for what is still unseen. But why would we need to hope for something we already have? Hmm. So hope means it's something, if my hope is in operation, and that's telling me that's something I don't have. So I don't have to hope for something I already have. I have to use hope for what I don't have. Then it says, so because our hope is set on what is yet to be seen, we patiently keep on waiting for its fulfillment. Notice, hope is unseen. But you need hope to get what you don't possess. Hope connects you to what is unseen, and what is unseen, if you hope long enough, your hope, saith the Lord, will be fulfilled. See, hope must be uh, carried. I liken it unto a woman getting pregnant. It has had the baby. But guess what? We watched her for months walking around with a belly. So that baby was in there impregnated, amen, and there was a certain time, but guess what? The baby grew. Started off, didn't even know she was pregnant when she got pregnant. But then that hope, that baby began to grow on the inside, and then eventually, that hope, everybody, now everybody knew she was pregnant. Let me ask you something. If I hang out with you long enough, will I know you're spiritually pregnant with the promise of God? Is the, are you preparing for the manifestation of the promise of God that he has for your life? Now, I know they had to prepare a room, had to prepare a baby crib, had to go out and buy clothes. Let me ask you something. Are you preparing for the fulfillment of the hope that God has placed in your life. Amen? Amen? And if I hang around you long enough, I should be telling, I should be able to pick up quickly what you're, what you're, what you're, what you're full of. Had to be careful. <laughs> Are you, my <clears throat> God. See, hope the fulfillment of hope. So eventually your, your hope should be coming out in your actions and your words. But if you're not full of hope, you're full of junk, you're full of doubt, you're full of unbelief, that's what's going to come out when I go in your presence. Amen. What are you full of? How many people know it's not good enough just to come to church? You got to get what's in here on the inside of you. It's not good enough just to have the Bible in a book. You got to get the book on the inside of you. And let that thing become one. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
God wants to manifest his word in your life, but it's not going to manifest until you put it on the inside of you and begin to feed that hope. Oh, my God, how'd they get that promise? They were feeding their hopes. They were believing. They were looking for it. They were expecting it. They were talking about it. They woke up in the morning. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why are you so happy? Because I got a man, you ain't got nothing on the outside to be happy about, but it's on the inside. I got a glimpse of my future, and it's bright. I don't care where I am. I don't care if I'm living in the dorm, living in a mobile home. I don't, I don't care if I'm in a jail cell. What's on the inside of me is going to override all this stuff because I got a hope that's greater than where I'm at. Notice, waiting for its fulfillment. Proverbs 23, 18. The Bible says, surely there is a future and a reward, and your hope and expectation shall not be cut off. Somebody say, my hope will not be cut off. Now, the devil is trying to cut it off by you giving up, by you quitting, by you throwing in the towel. Then he can cut it off. But as far as God is concerned, your hope cannot be cut off. You got to steward your hope. You got to steward uh, what goes in you. You got to protect it like uh, Jennifer had to protect the baby. Amen. No sweets. No soda. I know she ain't drinking no alcohol, so I don't need to say that one. <laughs> but you know what time it is, amen? She had to watch her diet to make sure she be- delivered a healthy baby. So there, surely, somebody say surely. I love God. God uses definite words. He takes the doubt out. Surely there's an expectation. Surely there's a hope. Surely it will come to pass. Get the question out of your mind. Get the hesitation. Oh, is that really God? Is that really want that me? Is it good? Then it's God. <laughs> if it's bad, it ain't God. Amen. Now listen, when you hit a rough place in life, you shouldn't lose your hope. You should use hope to come out of it. See, some, some people lose their hope. When he hit a rough spot. But God gave you that hope to come out of the disappointment. A rough spot cannot wipe out your hope. Hope from God will actually come alive in a rough spot. Romans 5, 3 through 5. Listen to this. But not all, even in times of trouble, we have joyful confidence. Knowing that our pressures will develop us patient endurance. And patient endurance will refine our character, and proven character leads us back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that lives in us. So it's talking about enduring, but enduring, I was going to call this message enduring hope. But enduring with hope. You know, it's easy to go through turbulence on an airplane when the plane is still flying through the sky. A bump here, a bump there, but you don't get too shaken up because you know eventually the plane is going to arrive at your destination. The turbulence is not an end. It's just something you're passing through. Your hope is the destination. So sometimes we get hit by life and we think that's the end. We think the plane is going down. We think, oh, Jesus, this is it. The devil is a liar. The turbulence is not going to wipe your hope out. You're going to make it to your destination. Amen. Now, you, if you want to be crazy, can can begin to prophesy over your life and begin to speak doom and go against your hope and speak something into existence that God doesn't want to come to pass, but never speak contrary to your hope. I ain't going down. (laughs) 
I don't know if some angels got to come and get this thing, but we riding, amen. I, I, my ticket says Chicago, I'm going to be in Chicago. My ticket says L.A., I'm going to be in L.A., amen. Jesus, do what you got to do. But I got, I got something on the inside of me. I got too much destiny on the inside of me for me to die in this plane. See, some of y'all, that's why you're not gone, because you got too much destiny on the inside of you. And God said, nah, it's terrible. You can't take them out, devil. They got, they got my they're carriers of my plan and my hope in the earth. Amen? God's got a plan for your life. That's why the devil couldn't wipe you out. And you need to tap into it, believe it, fight for it, and receive it. This is your pilot, pilot Tony Samuels. How y'all doing? Experiencing a little turbulence, but just fasten your seatbelts. Secure all your laptops and all that stuff. We'll get through this in a moment, amen? And as soon as we're in it, I'll take, put the light on. You can take your seatbelt off, amen? Look at your name and say, brace yourself. But you're going to make it through. All right, this devil mess with me. I'm brace myself now. Okay. See, he's expecting you to have a funeral. You ain't dead. Get up and fight the good fight of faith. What are you doing making plans to lose? You're a winner. You change your thinking. Who said you're going to lose? God did. Listen, you already losing before God got you. If you want to lose, he left you alone. He called you out to call you in to his hope, to his destiny that he has for your life. And don't let the devil use disappointments to wipe you out. Do what y'all want to do. I'm going to be all right. Listen, when you start thinking about, man, God saved me from a gunshot. God saved me from car accidents. God saved me from overdose. Man, God saved me from all kinds of crazy stuff. When I wasn't even serving him, I was in, now I'm, I'm his son. I'm in the kingdom of God. Now this devil going to try to come up in here and mess with me? The God that protected me when I wasn't even with it is the God that's going to protect me now while I'm rolling with him. The hope God gives you won't take you down. It's going to take you up. Notice, it said it's not a disappointing hope. Be careful that you don't let disappointment wipe out your hope. The word disappointment means to fail to fulfill the expectations or wishes of. To defeat the fulfillment of hopes and plans. To thwart, to frustrate. Disappointment is an enemy of hope. Proverbs 13, 12. Listen to this. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire is filled, fulfilled, it is a tree of life. L let's look at it in the passion. When hope's dreams, I'm talking to your dreams tonight. When hope's dreams seem to drag on, and the, the delay can be depressing. But when at last your dream comes true, life's sweetness will satisfy your soul. So the Bible says hope deferred or hope delayed will make your heart sick. But don't let a delay or disappointment uh, get you because what it does is making you think it's not going to happen. Look at the delay. Look at the response. Look at what you got. And that can uh, make your heart sick because it totally contradicts the hope and the dream that God has for you. Do you understand that God works the best in contradicting situations? 
He wants actually everything stacked against you. So when he shows up and emerges, you know it was not by might. It was not by power. It was by this was God. Man, they were, it was stacked against me, man. I got a bad hand. It, oh, my God, I can't. I'm not going to win with this. There was no way, amen, I was going to come out on top. But God did a miracle on my behalf because I didn't lose my hope. A delay is not a denial. You're delayed, but you're not denied. Now, real quick, let me give you three things to maintain hope. This is a big one. You have to balance your hope with thanksgiving. Because God is not only the God of your future, he's the God of your past, and he's the God of your present. So thanksgiving, because sometimes what people do, they look so far ahead and they don't see God in their now and they forget God in their past. So thanksgiving, thank you, Lord. You know what? I ain't walking in that hope yet, but it's coming. But let me just uh, check your resume. What you been doing for me the last year? My God, I'm, I'm walking, I'm walking uh, stronger now than I've ever been walking. I mean, I'm not where I want to be, but my God I ain't where I used to be. And I got to begin to thank God for the uh, little victories before I get to the ultimate victory. And sometimes we're so focused on the future, we forget to give God thanksgiving, and we begin to despise where we're at, and we don't see God where we're at, and we forget about what God did in our past, amen? But a thanksgiving will balance your hope, amen? So you're not looking too far out, and you're not stuck in the past, but you're right, even kill where you need to be, amen? Thank you, Lord. Woo! Man, I'm getting kind of sad today. Okay, I know I'm getting sad because this hope is delaying. But let me go reach back to what God been doing, what God has done. Oh, my God, I'm growing, Lord. I mean, you did this. You brought this family member back. You did And you got to begin to thank God for the little victories on your way to the great victory. Because sometimes we can become spiritually ungrateful. It happened to the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. A oh, oh, manna from the sky, or oh, water from the rock. And God was, and, and their whole relationship with God was based on performance. If your relationship with God is based on performance, when the performance stops, your relationship will stop. Make sure you're putting your hope in the right place. Place your hope in God, not people, not money, not position. Why? Because the Lord will not let you down, and the Lord will feed your hope. So when I talk about hope, don't put it in people. <laughs> Until I tell my wife, they're like, man, some people make some crazy decisions. Sometimes you think, Things are going this way, and then they just make a move and go totally off the course. So you can't put your hope in something unstable. You got to be put something in, in something or somebody that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I can change on you. <laughs> you know, the, the, whoever you think is all that can change on you. But God will not change on you, so put your hope in God. Because the Lord will not let you down. Last point. Feed your hope with the promises of God. Just like that little baby. Because the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Be careful what you're hearing. Your hope was birthed through hearing the promise. But hope can be destroyed by hearing something contrary to the promise. You can't come in here and me talking about hope and dreams and then go hang around people talking about. 
This world is crazy, man. Ain't nothing good happening around here. What you struggling with? What I'm struggling with? I'm full of hope. I just came out of church. God's about to bring my dream away. You heard about the pandemic? Heard about the vaccine? They ain't got nothing to do with me. Amen. I got a hope that's beyond that. Amen. <laughs> but don't uh, uh, receive hope through hearing some and then let somebody hurt your hope through speaking something negative. Stand to your feet. Could have kept going, but oh. save it, save it. Amen. Woo! Listen, you have a dream that God has given you. You must contend for the faith. You must fight for it. That hope, listen, anybody that's in church right now has a hope. Because if you didn't have hope, you'd be gone. So there's something in you. That's, that's saying, man, I, I, there, there's something I'm believing God for. There's something in your spirit, and you got to keep feeding it. You got to fight for it. You got to contend for it, and don't let the devil bury you. Keep that thing alive because that's your future. I'm telling you, God showed me this. In a jail cell, I, he gave me a hope. He said, you coming out of this. I am? But there's a lot of paper stacked. You, you coming out. And then he began to give me a vision. My, my vision wasn't ministry for it. My vision was to have a family. He said, one day you're going to have children. You're going to have a wife. You're gonna, I mean, stuff that I, I couldn't attain, God did it. But he put, God, and you think he would wait till I got to church to give me that. No, I'm going to give you that in a jail cell. Because that's the thing I'm going to use to bring you out of the jail cell and bring you from faith to faith and glory to glory until the manifestation of what I put in your heart. How many people know right now I'm holding on to some dreams right now? Because once hope is fulfilled, God gives you more hope. But if you never see the manifestation of what he's got in you now, you're not going to see the manifestation of future stuff. That's why you got to walk it out. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah! Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. I think I know everybody here, but is there anyone here you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? That's where it all starts. Anybody? Everybody say, raise your hand. <laughs> get them, get them. <laughs> Start deputizing people. I mean, bring them on over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have y'all been blessed? Listen, Friday night, celebrating 69 years of ministry. A ministry that has been responsible for bringing dreams to pass in people's life. Taking people from utter darkness, from the bottom, and picking them up, restoring them, and moving them into the destiny that God has for their life. So come on out. If you ain't got a ticket, get one. We're going to have a good time. We got some powerful testimonies lined up. Of course, some food. Amen. We like to eat. Amen, but it's going to be a great time. You're going to really see the ministry on display. Amen? Amen. We're going to close out now, but if you need any special prayer, the prayer team will be up here to minister to you. Amen? Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Father, I just thank you for the, uh, man, I just recognize right now all the dreams that are represented in this room. Father, your heart's desire on every man, woman, and child is in this room right now. And, Father God, I pray you would uh, seal this word in their hearts, in their minds, in their spirits. Father God, I come against disappointments that have come to try to set the hope back. Devil, you a liar. God's hope will come, still come to pass in their lives, Father. So, Father, we thank you. And because of the hope, we know our futures are brighter than ever before. Ephesians 3.20. Now, unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, 
above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed, church.